his king that he is worshiping is not the Jesus of the Bible at all. Not even kind of. And this is the album cover. This is the staircase ascending up to the light or the Catholic wafer. Some people have said the portal that the Antichrist's, um, you know, satanic father is going to be thrown down. Uh, when you blow it out, it's a keyhole. There have been some pretty good videos uh, dealing with some of this content, really getting into who James Terrell is as the occultist, as the Quaker, and uh, Christianity's been under assault with a reformation, um, a revolution, a, a changing of Christian Christianity from within, and other very famous Quakers. We've talked about this. Um, um, quantum spirituality. These people, Leonard, Leonard Sweet. They want to redub and sabotage Christianity from within. So quantum spirituality. Um, fractal theory. Yeah, the whole fractal theory thing, the whole... You know, we're all, it's pantheism and panentheism. You know, God is in all. God is all. And he's in everything, which is not what Christianity teaches. Christianity teaches the character and nature of God is that he's a unique entity that is called creator. There are three people that exist harmoniously that constitute God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit called the Godhead or the God ruler. And they are persons, uh, they are spirit, and the sun takes on flesh. So, very different story. There is a lot of information over here at lighthousetrails.com. And they talk about all kinds of entities who have, for quite some time within the emergent church, just with a battering ram, have tried to push and push and push and push to redefine, retool, re, retell Christianity, and people have allowed it to go on unabated for so long that the youth, the they just, yeah, the new Reformation, people just accept it now. So it's not a weird thing in Beats 1 uh, interview with Zane Lowe, where Kanye West says that God is in everyone. That is absolutely not the case or you wouldn't be offered rebirth rebirth is god going into you but while jesus has tasted death for everyone my god my god why hast thou forsaken me psalm 22 says he has tasted death for all people not only bodily and physically on the cross for hebrews tells us that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness period and it is that faith in the blood but also, there is a spiritual aspect of, of the Father pouring his wrath out on Christ, taking your sin and turning away from his son, who otherwise they were in relationship with. So you have these people for a long, long time. This is, this is not a new thing. But they have been persistent in their error. They have been persistent in sabotaging the faith to the point now where people are accepting of the error. They just, they don't care. Uh, so the, I have this book, actually. It's very, very good. And uh, they did a, a little uh, sneak peek on the, the uh, chapter 11. I don't have the book in front of me, but um, I am spacing in this moment on what it is called. And why did they not title it? That is not helpful. Let me move this. Oh, A Wonderful Deception. That's right. A Wonderful Deception. I can't even think of the author's name. It's a very basic name. But that doesn't really matter. The name of the book is A Wonderful Deception by a guy that used to be a New Ager. And then through basically demonic harassment of him and his wife, Warren Smith. There we go. Thank you, Lord. Warren B. Smith. 
got to the point where the Lord orchestrated a series of events that drew him into the safety, care, and protection of the Holy Spirit. And uh, very interesting story. Very interesting, man. So anyhow, he wrote this book. He has been a wonderful source of assistance to the church. And this has been going on for a long time. You just have the current flavor of the month now, Kanye, taking this stuff from the church out into the mainstream to pervert and augment and change Christianity from within. And most people who are going along with it, you're, what you're actually doing is you are, in a sense, this is a legal term, but I'm, I'm saying in a sense here, you are aiding and abetting the enemy in allowing the changing of Christianity that will result in the wholesale spiritual damnation of many people as this is setting up for the Antichrist. So in this chapter, I'm just going to pepper through it a little bit here, Sweet Spangler and Quantum Spirituality. So they are really into this idea of a quantum spirituality and that God is in you and you just need to get a hold of some secret knowledge, Bubby. Climb that staircase and get to that light or that, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, but you're God and God's you and you're all happy together. And we're going to get rid of Christianity with those people that say, no, 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 you got to be born again. If you want to possess a magical crystal for our new age work, we need look no further than our own bodies and the cells that make them up. David Spangler, 1991. I'm grateful for David Spangler for his help in formatting, formating, formulating <laughs> this new cell understanding of the new light leadership. So we've talked about the, the new light workers. We've talked about the light workers. They're Masons, 1991. So they have been bringing in wave after wave after wave of heretical evil bad guys to change the faith from within. Leonard Sweet, in acknowledging Willis Harmon, Matthew Fox, M. Scott Peck, and others he refers to as, quote, new light leaders and quantum spirituality, which is precisely what you see in this picture right here with the Masonic staircase ascending up. My friend counted it and thought there were 18 steps. That is symbolic of a Masonic know thyself kind of a thing. You're ascending to the light. You're going through the keyhole and you have this Gnostic belief that you can just get a hold of this information and you can remember, Bubby, that you're God and you're all help for you who are putting your wallets into this. You're helping spread the bastardization of Christianity. So choices, choices, they have their consequences. Jesus said, let no man take away your crown. So he wanted to introduce you to the IMAX movie, the Kanye West film, Jesus is King, so that you too can go along with the perversion. And many, many people have. Many people have. And he is making a lot of money from it. as they mass spread it everywhere, bringing the contagion everywhere. Don't want to hear about that. But see, you can see the steps. You're going to ascend to your damnation. Yeah, that's what's going on. How much are the tickets, by the way? I don't know. They're not playing it anywhere near me. Anyhow, so Quantum Spirituality, which is the book, says, I believe that there are among the most religious, creative leaders in America today. They are the ones carving out channels for new ideas to flow. And in this way, this book was written to guide myself through their channels and chart their progress. The book's best ideas come from them. Conscious intuitives. 
for the new age. So the new age is just blending in with Christianity. And now Kanye's doing it better than any of his predecessors before him because he's doing the bang up job of bringing in both the fake Christians, the tares, uh, the Church of Ephesus, Sardis, Laodicea, Thyatira, Pergamos, and a a, a, a cross section of Smyrna who will be cut off for unbelief, but later will repent. Um, those churches that the letters were written to in Revelation two and three that Jesus commanded them to repent, or else a series of cataclysmic consequences, like being cut off into the tribulation, would occur. So Kanye is grabbing in all of those fake Christians that are all helping to sell his album. Oh, I listened to a song and it would change my life. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit here. But also, you have him drawing in the people that don't associate, uh, especially the millennials, with any type of religion whatsoever. So they're all being brought into this era. And it is for this emergence, the rebirth of the sacred revelation, the birth of the new age, the reimagination of the world, a critique of the new age, science and popular culture. And he's talking about the birth of a new age as a compilation of guided transmissions that he received from dun, 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 your helpful disembodied spirit guide, John. At one point, in Revelation Spangler documents that John prophesied about the energies of cosmic Christ and oneness. And I would tell you that you're being sold the same lie from Kanye. As the energies of the cosmic Christ become increasingly manifest with the etherical life of Earth, many individuals will begin to respond with the realization that Christ dwells within them, right? In your inner chambers. Christ said the Antichrist, imposter Christ Jew, would come hailing from the desert and teaching that he is in the inner chambers in Matthew 24. Oh, look around verses 25, 26. Uh, but that was a lie and that you were not to believe them and that you're not to believe the false prophets that would precede him. But you have in Kanye West and many other Masons, which is why everybody in media and popular culture are supporting him. They will feel his presence moving within and through them and will begin to awaken to their heritage of the Christhood and the oneness with God, the beloved. Oneness with something, but it isn't God. And it says here, unbelievably, in a modern day consultation that bears more than a casual resemblance to King Saul's consultation with the witch of Endor. Who can forget that? That's that's what uh, got Saul to have his kingdom torn away from him. Witchcraft, rebellion, first Samuel 28, 7. So this is um, quite a few pages. I just kind of want to hit on the most important things. But it's important that people understand how Christianity is being perverted and by what type of theology, what type of communication, what words, what phrases, what ideologies, because this is how the brainwashing engineers through media, through your popular entertainers, through the musicians, through the interviews, through the one-sided relationship that you have with these actors or singers or you know, whatever, the Jimmy Kimmel's and the late night talk show guys that after you've had a hard day of being beaten up by people emotionally or whatever, maybe you have a great job, I don't know. But at the end of the night, they give you laughter and respite. You know, it's a very one-sided relationship. But in that, they are passing off information to you and seeding it into your consciousness in this entertainment-driven manner where your brain kind of kicks into this non- um, what do you want to call it? Non, non on guard mode. Okay. Where you're having info being seeded into your soil of your heart and you don't even realize these aren't your thoughts. That's how good they are. So he talks about in this quantum spirituality, that's sweet, writes about, he calls a new cell, understanding the new light leadership. That, and, um, he goes into the main characteristics of what I want to talk about here, which is that the new lights offer up themselves as the cosmions of the mind of Christ consciousness. This is where Kanye is going to be taking you. 
But I believe that he's going to do it much more subtle. And he's going to make a lot of money doing it as he co-ops people's cooperation. And Christ again said, let no man take away your crown. So you better be paying attention to who you're supporting because God is. As a cosmion incarnating the cells of a new body, new body, don't we always talk about the one new mankind in Christ? The cells of a new body, new lights will function as transitional vessels through which transforming energy can renew the divine image in the world, moving postmoderns, that's you the people, from one state of embodiment to another. Yay, you get to become fake gods. Yay. And he's grateful for that. It's all about the new age and the new cell and the new body and the new creation. So basically what he's saying in a nutshell is that your physical human body is basically a host to the transformative power of becoming Christ. So... To the casual reader, it might look like Spangler and Sweet are actually speaking against the New Age. No. In fact, quotes taken out of context might even make it appear that that is true. But this is definitely not the case. And Sweet, who purports to be a Christian, and Spangler, who's just about as New Age as you can get, and I believe he was a Catholic priest, are just doing some New Age slash New Spirituality public relations. And they are both, and this is, I would tell you, I would argue that this is what Kanye is doing. He's just doing it on a larger mass scale involving more people. And that's why he's Christian genius billionaire Kanye West and laughing at you all the way to the bank. And when people go to the concerts, they're kind of built into this idea that now you need to you want you've had this experience now you need to buy the two hundred dollar or sixty dollar you know whatever outfits and things that go along with it so that you can remember your experience so they are redefining and refining the term new age as they try to strip it of its terms from a different older brand that first brought it into being Screaming on the beach, Shirley MacLaine, I am God, and put it into the realm of seemingly more of an authoritative science. So I would agree. And it really has these underpinnings of Kabbalah. The term New Age would no longer be associated with occult spiritual beliefs, but rather with a period of time, a new era in which they seemingly scientifically based spiritual beliefs would manifest. This is science. And so didn't didn't Paul warn us about the so-called science? It would no longer be New Age spirituality. It would now be a universal new spirituality. For a new era, the coming New Age. The New Age would be equated with a planetary era and a planetary ethic that would reflect a passionate concern for the environment and all of humanity. Enter Mother Earth. Now just jack her up with AI and you've got essentially the abomination of desolation. The new era would also reflect the new civility called for by Sweet's hero, the late New Age leader M. Scott Peck. And in his 1993 book, A World Waiting to be Reborn, see they want to rebirth another kingdom in their own effort. Does that remind you of anyone? Does that remind you of Paul discussing Hagar and her son Ishmael and Abraham, and they're trying to bring forth the heir that doesn't come by the Holy Spirit, a miracle of faith and by the promise. Genesis 18. Read, 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 well, I mean, uh, the whole thing is from 12 to like 21 at least. Um, but Paul talks about it in school as this in Galatians 3 and 4, and he talks about this, this kingdom that is in bondage to sin, speaking of Jerusalem, this earthly Jerusalem, and he contrasts that with this kingdom of people born of a Jerusalem above, of freedom. So you see, these people want to give you a kingdom that is 
brought about by human effort. You can't get the air by human effort. You can't get the one new man and kind in Christ by your effort because Zachariah told us it will only come by the spirit. But they're going to try anyhow. And they even have their own manufactured savior, this AI super human transhuman savior that's coming. So Peck writes the following about this utopian new age. The distinguishing feature of the citizens of utopia is not their location or nationality or religion or occupation, but their commitment to becoming even more civil individuals and their membership in a planetary culture of civility. You're tolerant of everything but Christianity and that air from the promise of the Holy Spirit. By virtue of this commitment and membership, regardless of their theology, they are welcome. They, they welcome the active presence of God into both their individual and ding, 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 group salvation, their collective lives, just like Kanye does. God is in everything, he says. Although their primary allegiance is to the development of their own souls, they are all involved in teaching as well as learning civility and dedicated to inviting others into their planetary culture. And you jerk Christians aren't allowed in with your rebirth and your, your fancy Jesus on the cross. You are too mean and you won't allow the rest of us in. Even though everybody is allowed to come in, you just have to go according to God's prescripts which is the gospel, and you can't keep your sin. <laughs> the, the point of coming to Christ is that he will one day take away our sin and give us perfected lives without sin. Who is going to argue with the call for ecological responsibility? Well, yeah, I mean, they're telling you that everything's going to die and, and be destroyed while they're going about using harp and these different devices to bring about these disasters and saying it's global warming. See, it's global warming. And Mother Earth's getting really mad. Human compassion and planetary civility in this coming new era, this realized new age, only those who recognize the new age beliefs are being smuggled in under the cover of the new planetary ethic, a new spirituality, and a new worldview for the coming new age. Leonard Sweet and Brian McLaren, these are emergent people, but also try to redefine the term new age more as a period of time than a set of occult beliefs. Attempting to marginalize the whole New Age movement by characterizing it as vague, consumeristic, undefined, and mushy, McLaren misses the fact that the New Age is a well-organized spiritual movement with a long-standing hostility to biblical Christianity. Is that not what the thesis of almost all of my videos on Kanye West and the Masons have been about? <laughs> This is serious. The church is under attack and the church is outgoing. I love his songs. They make me happy. I can dance to them. And you're like, are you kidding me? The New Age is very serious about what it believes and it's anything but mushy. But as McLaren wrongly defines, the New Age is mushy while simultaneously equating biblical Christianity with, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it, pushy fundamentalism. He paves the way for a newly emerging theology, a new spirituality for a new age. The term new age, then characterized as a cult belief system, neatly disappears as the new age. They don't want to use that label anymore. Simply becoming the time frame in which the new spirituality appears. And in his book, Finding Our Way Again, McLaren describes this new spirituality for the coming new age. Let me pull the page down here. The word <clears throat> spirituality captures the fusion of every day sacred does. Find me a scripture for that. <laughs> for many people, it represents a life-giving alternative to oh, stinky secular fundamentalism. And ooh, it's ugly cousin, religious fundamentalism. Ew, boo, hiss. The former offering the world weapons of mass destruction and the latter stirring emotions to put the suicidal machinery into motion. You big mean born again Christians with your gospel and your fancy bloody cross. 
This dissatisfaction in some cases has led to a reactionary resurgence of dun, 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 pushy fundamentalism. Remember that stinky cheese that Bugs Bunny wasn't into? They would always hyper-focus on that stinky cheese. Do you remember that? <laughs> Fearful, manic, violent, apocalyptic. And in other cases, it has led to a search for a new kind of spirituality. The success of failure of this search will no doubt play a role, a major role in the story of the 21st century. Oh, you mean the apostasy Paul said was coming and you're totally going to get your butts kicked by God with 21 judgments? I hope you like blood because pretty soon the holdouts, that's all they're going to have to drink is blood. Blood in the uh, ocean? Blood in the rivers, blood, everywhere. blood, yeah, blood everywhere. Blood in the lakes, blood in the drinking water, blood, 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 blood. blood. God's I just like. My mom talking about it, but then I just... So they're gonna get to the point where they're just killing everything. God's like, oh, you like blood, huh? <laughs> Those are the judgments and many more. So he has to retool Christianity, and you see the same. Thing that Kanye is doing with maligning the church. We make it too hard for the Mormons and the, the uh, Roman Catholics to get into, he says. No, they're choosing that. And things that are not alike, Kanye, are different. <laughs> and so they really want to push this postmodern, post colonial, post enlightenment, post Christian, Christendom, post Holocaust. Post 9-11 for an alternative where we all just hold hands together and sing Kumbaya. And we have a new age to look forward to. Well, as you can tell, he documents and just goes through every little thing. This guy is extremely meticulous. This is interesting. It says here he was starting to redefine, this is McLaren, the new age as a new era rather than a set of occult beliefs. In Quantum Spirituality, Leonard writes, the church stands on the front lines of the coming reign of God. Reign of God? You know, that sounds a lot like the NAR, New Apostolic Reformation, people underneath the Jews that are all preparing for their Mashiach. That's what that sounds like to me. The coming reign of God. We got to get it all ready for God. He doesn't know what he's doing. We're going to help him out. No, that would be the Antichrist. Or the biblical scholar Christian Beaker entitles this chapter on Paul's. How do you say that? Ecclesial thought the church, the church is the dawning of the new age. How is this not Blavatsky? The event of Jesus Christ spells out the end of the old age and the beginning of the new age. The church then is the beachhead of the new creation. Um, well, there is a new creation in Christ. But again, you have to see that there is a worldly kingdom of people in slavery and self-effort. And they are also trying to create a new creation through human effort and ingenuity and technology and sorcery and none of it is going to work, which is why Babylon has fallen. Babylon has fallen. In Beaker's words, the sign of the new age and the old world that is passing away. Thus, while David Spangler, Brian McLaren, the emergent, Leonard Sweet, the emergent, all seem to be distancing themselves from this new age, they are actually helping to bring it in. They are bringing it in because they hold to the basic new age view that, wait for it, we are all one. Because God is in everything. As Sweet shares in Quantum Spirituality to underline, under, underline this idea, Sweet turns to contemplative mystic pantheist Thomas Merton. Oh, the Catholic? Mm-hmm. If the church is to dance, where does it say that in scripture? We sing a new song to the Lord who gives us a new reality. However, it must first get its flabby self back in shape. I mean, this is just stupid. So far, the church has 
refused to dip its toe into postmodern culture. No, we just continue to give the the the, the postmodern culture the gospel. A quantum spirituality changes the church to bear its past and dare its future by sticking its big toe into the time and place of the present. Please, you're just bringing new age evil Luciferian garbage into this world. And the apostasy is occurring where people are turning away from the truth that were never born again in the first place and going to this other advent or however you want to call it, um, door directive, whatever, to evil. Then and only then will the flattened out one dimensional and at all times dimensionless world have discovered the power and vitality of a four dimensional faith. We need a four dimensional faith. Then and only then will a new light movement of world making faith have helped to create the world that is, too, and may yet be. And then and only then, with earthlings, have uncovered the meaning of these words. Some of the last words, poet, activist, contemplative bridge between East and West, Thomas Merton uttered, we are already one. But we imagine that we are not. And what we have to re recover is our original unity. And isn't that a huge theme with Mr. West? Isn't that a huge theme that you have to argue with other Christians who are like, he's bringing unity. This is, this is what the Bible said would happen. This is wonderful. And you're like, are you sure you have the right Christ? Because he said in Luke and then in another gospel, and you combined them together, let's see, Matthew and Luke, I believe, he said that he, this next advent, you're supposed to figure out, uh, so Feast of Trumpets, yeah, he's totally not bringing peace. He's bringing a sword of division. And you're supposed to figure out that that's between light and dark, good and bad, sweet and bitter, and so on and so forth. So he doesn't bring error into unity. He, he brings truth that divides error from unity. That's how that works. Uh, so you can definitely tell who the real Christ is and who the fake Christ is. So, you know, this he just documents really well about the repackaging of the New Age. He brings up all the names. He brings up this pan-antheistic doctrine that we're all one because Christ is in everything and remains completely intact. Thus, nothing has really changed. The New Age with its quantum universal cosmic Christ is still the same heretical spirituality with the same heretical New Age Christ. So another main point that he puts forth is that the new age has just been repackaged for an unsuspecting world and a very, very undiscerning church. In reimagination, the reimagination of the world, Spangler writes, where is the Christ that is revealing itself and incarnating now? Where is the Christ in nature and earth? Where is the feminine Christ? Ugh. What? With new discoveries in biology and quantum physics, we are seeing more and more what mystics have always seen. The process side of reality is interconnectedness. See, this is Kabbalah. It's interpenetratingness. That's not a word. It's blendedness. It's cohesion he's talking about. God and man, God and nature. Of course, we already see in Romans 1 that Paul says that they would trade over the worship of God for mankind and God would turn them over to debased and reprobate minds and just let them go, you know? Where is the Christ in this expanding worldview? Well, that would be Satan. The Christ becomes a cosmic Christ. Just as the advertiser can repackage a product and call it new and improved or the other under new management. So the cosmic Christ repackages Christ. In fact, the essential qualities of the presence remain the same. Christ is a Christ is a Christ. That is true whether we view its actions within an individual, a planet, or the cosmos as a whole, this New Ager is saying. However, the new packaging may make it more accessible to people to help us recognize some of those qualities of the Christ that we have been overlooking for the past 2000 years. So they have 
a new fancy smancy super Christian genius Kanye West when that everybody is all around and I think that an archetype allegory he is playing the part or the role in this part right here in this video that we did called West's Closed on Sunday. That's one of the songs from the album. Uh, this is the video they did for a code for elite coming against the church for the war and restart. Pay attention. And he is the Christ figure, right? And he has everybody coupled up into a circle. And, and this is your visual representation of God and man in one. That's what's going on. And they're all sort of moving. It it um it has this sort of earthy spirit, spiritual connection by the spirit globe, you know, circle we are one feeling to it. And then he's in the center. And he, he also has that same tan color of the clothing, which is very Mother Earthy. All the people around him are wearing the cultish, tannish garb, which actually looks really nice on them. But not the point. Not the point. And then he has this beautiful brown here. So you have him being the odd man out. So he is the, and I'm not saying he's the Antichrist. I'm saying in storytelling, they use visuals to 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 do that to illustrate a story to you to illustrate and to rebrand christianity for you and this is a new christianity that uh god and man have yoked it's not through the blood of jesus that's why he never has anything about the cross this is about the light this is about the luciferian gnostic kabbalistic interconnectedness of new age and people are unbelievably ignorant, which means without knowledge of the rebranding of Christianity, this sabotage that's happening. And he so perfectly ex uh, explains what I just said was happening with that picture posed on Sunday. Home Valley of Humanity. A lot of the ideas and things that we need yeah. have been are from thousands and thousands of years ago. It's just like, what do we need for our yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of need chart? What is, mm. what are our personal needs as a human being? And what we need the most is each other. Mm. That's why we gather together, just like the antelopes that are running out there. Mm -hmm. We gather together. And what is the best form of each other? Family, to keep our families close. Mm -hmm. But cities, have been designed to create more problems that can create more industries. Okay, but I would say, too, that with him talking about family, he's not just talking about individual families. I think that he is talking about this cosmic Christ, new planetary humanity, this new human, this new humanity, this new trans human from his other albums and he's you know kind of holding that at bay a little bit but bringing forth the sorcery end of it although he tells this guy that you can keep listening to his albums so he's never really disavowed himself from the transhumanist stuff and the god stuff and now he's bringing in the sorcery end of it through the masonic light of this knowledge and it's for a one new humanity that's what's going on so he's talking about, oh, yeah, God gives us everything. And he's going to talk about rebirth in a moment. But I submit to you that it's not the rebirth of what the Bible presents of, you know, the gospel and John 3, 3, that all men must be born again in order to participate in the kingdom. But rather, it is a rebirth of this cosmic humanity that, that God is in everyone. The thing that we need, what I love about being Christian is, I've always been an innovator, but it always seemed like all the innovators were working for, I don't know, Anran, I heard the term or something like these ideas that there is no God, all this, and it's just working for the valuation of a company, mm -hmm. as opposed to working for the rebirth 
or it's not a rebirth. I, I, I might not find the right word, but working for a renewal of the planet and a humility in humanity to understand that we will not destroy the earth. We could destroy the resources. We can destroy ourselves. And we destroy ourselves, and sure. then the earth goes on. Sure. So regardless of what's happening at Wall Street and what's happening at the board, uh, at the, you know, mm -hmm. with, with trade and what's happening, a Pangea-type mentality, mm -hmm. a UN mm -hmm. coming together. One thing, no matter what side you're on, you're considered to be a bad guy or a good guy. Everybody wants a similar thing, and that's for the world to be better for their children. Mm -hmm. So someone's fighting in a war. Mm -hmm. They want the Facts. world to be better for Facts. their children. Yeah. And what we're not realizing, being all God's creation, is we have so much more in common than we think. I think there's something planted in us, this idea of you know, human nature, even something I was saying, uh, I, uh, I saw on Silicon Valley where this guy was like, I don't want the world to be fixed if, I, if I'm not the one fixing it. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you're right, we, we put us, you know, we, we do. We always put ourselves right, right in, the, in the center of trying to solve things. But I often think that as society, we lack direction and the unity needed to do it as one, right? <laughs> we don't always have to be the one that does it. You know, this yeah. interview alone yeah. might do it. I could be in there and, you know, uh, have these ideas of oh, civil engineering and using aqueducts and sustainable gardening and farming. Uh, but there's people out there that are going to see this and they're like, they're going to come to the table and say, you know, I've done, I've studied this for 10 years. I've mm. studied this for 10 years. I've mm. studied this for 10 years. And it's something where everybody all the fortune 500 companies all the founders have to come to the table and say this is what we want we were here in 2012. Right. it's a difference between founders yeah and stockholders yeah and i don't even want to hear about that because i don't care but um they do want to bring about an ecumenical unity for a new mankind on this planet and that's why he's pushing so hard with this mother earth stuff this is all from the roman catholic church and the coexist movement. Okay, now he's talking about how he is a son of God through Christ. He he makes no mention of the cross at all. No, nothing to do with the blood. Um, nothing to do with with the gospel. Nothing to do with faith in the gospel. He he just peppers in that he is now free. He's a son of God through Christ. Doesn't really define what that means. I'm no longer uh, I'm no longer a slave. I'm a son now, a son of God. I'm free. He doesn't explain slave from what. Paul would tell you in Galatians 4 and John 8, Jesus would tell you a slave to sin. He doesn't mention sin. Through to Christ. I'm thinking of something I want to say out loud. Christian innovator. Christian innovator, but I would tell you that he's actually saying that he wants to change Christianity. Christian innovator, change Christianity. Isn't this what we've been talking about? He is a light worker. He is a mason. He is sabotaging the faith and presenting something that would be foreign and another gospel, a different story that would not fly with Jesus or the apostles. And yet the people love him. Tell me more lies, Kanye. They love him. When you think about the church, because it has to stand on the word so hard, it loves to be extra traditional to the point of blocking innovation. In terms of doctrine, yes! You can't change the doctrine. It doesn't really matter what aesthetic type of things you do to change the church. It's the doctrine. It is the lifeblood of what makes you a Christian, 
when you align in one Lord, one spirit, one baptism and the doctrine that was passed along from the traditional, he says traditional, but he's really meaning the doctrine of the Bible. And he doesn't like that. He wants to have that changed and augmented. And he's the one to do it because he is Christian genius, billionaire, Kanye West, the innovator, the changer of the faith. And there's a consequence. Not just the innovator, the Christian innovator. The Christian innovator. And he's going to get him that uh, that Sunday service marketing. Uh, what do you what do you what do you call that? Church merch. No, when you when you say that's my title, that's my thing. You can't use that, or I'll sue you. Oh, he, uh, he wants trademark. To, he wants to trademark and copyright uh, Sunday service. Yeah, because Trump is the master of uh, doing that. They're friends and. Anybody in the business world knows that you you got to brand your stuff and then you got to put it out to everybody. So he wants to innovate the church and change the church, but it's not just about changing it to an outside theme or the other, you know, examples that can be given. This is about changing the doctrine from within. That's what people aren't getting. So when we started Sunday service, we were able to be free where people were in doubt mm -hmm. of it and questioned. Some people still in question now, saying it's not a church. You can't call it a church because you don't have a pastor. It, all of these things. Is it a church? Uh, well, we have a pastor now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but is it a church? Like, I mean, is that is that kind of the ultimate compliment for you that Sunday service is a church? Well, let's ask let's ask North what she thinks. Um, we based our design. Loosely, not loosely. Okay, we Zarod. We, we, we Zarod James Terrell. We, uh, <laughs> what does he mean, Zarod? Does that mean copy? Does anybody know what Zarod means? And now he's going to talk about James Terrell. He's going to talk about the Quaker who is seeking the light and that God is in everything. This is very important. <laughs> we want to one day. <laughs> so <laughs> we, uh, That's we, a good, it's a good one to use. He's a good one to use. Yeah. So we and I have the utmost respect for, He's or, unreal. for Ortega also. Right, right. The head of Zara, because mm -hmm. I, I would like to Zara Zara. Right. Uh, I want to Zara their infrastructure. Right. And the way that the, their office environment. So the, the the church that we did, I was, you know, slightly embarrassed to show James that we had copied his his, uh, his circular space, yep. and it didn't even have an Oculus at the top, so yep. we just copied the way he did the benches right. and we did some lights. But the lights would move slow, and sometimes it looked like belly. So it was a big yurt. Yeah. <laughs> so what is yurt? <laughs> yurt's like a big sort of like rounded TP type environment. Oh, yeah, yes. Like, yeah. So I showed, you know, North a picture of a James Terrell structure mm -hmm. uh, that I loved, and she said, that looks like church. Mm. That's what church looks like to mm. North. Mm. And North is, you know, she was last night just actually crying about when she couldn't go to church when it would be out of town and she'd be at school. And she was like, church needs to be here every Sunday. So now we'll only move the church mostly on Friday and only move the choir mostly on Friday and throughout the week. But we'll always have it at home because church does need to be a place that people know they can go to and they don't have to hop on a flight and chase it down and mm -hmm. find that's what is a part of what I think makes it uh, a church. Another thing is when North talks about church, he says, I'm going to bring my friends here and I'm going to dance. Tell me someone that you know that's in our age group that their most positive memory of their childhood, or one of them equally was going to church. But people are like, I want to go to church. Mm. And what do you think that is? Sitting in those pews. The tradition. The four walls. Mm. God doesn't exist only in four walls. Mm. Wait for it. God doesn't only exist in four walls. Wait for it. God is everything and everywhere. Mm. God is everything and everywhere. God is everything? Really? Really? So number one, Kanye, we've had churches around for a long time. You're not actually coming up with the concept of church. That's what Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ came up with church. 
And the church is the ecclesia, the called out, the kodesh, the holy ones, who he puts his spirit in to indwell us into one spirit, one Lord, one baptism, one body forevermore. We just gather together some people in homes, some people in buildings. Some people, they don't have anything, and in countries where they get beaten up, they will go do church outside, Kanye. You didn't invent the concept of church for onesies. For twosies, there are lots of children and adults that are very excited about church because it's not about an experience with a billionaire, arrogant, horses, whatever. It's about communing with God. So he'll he'll badmouth the church, malign us, sabotage us, and say that there's something wrong with the way that we do church. And yet people for thousands of years have been going to church to get fed on the word of God, the traditional. And I don't care whether you're sitting in pews, chairs on the floor, in the grass. I mean, there's people that will go to church out in the dirt because their church has burned down. But According to Kanye, you got to have it a certain way. It has to look a certain way. It's all about him, 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 and him. And his daughter doesn't know anything outside of that family's influence of occultism. So you just heard it for yourself. The same thing that that book was warning you about, the repackaging of your faith into an occultic, damnable, Luciferian, Gnostic lie is exactly what Mr. West is doing, bringing forth the same thing. He's just doing it to bring forth the Antichrist and to get his horror ready, to get the false people ready for their God, who is not Jesus Christ. And that's why he says that God is in everything. Is God in everything? Is God in the sinner that says, I don't want you? No of their childhood or one of them equally was going to church but people are like i want to go to church mm. and what do you think that is sitting in those pews the tradition the four walls mm. god doesn't exist only in four walls mm. god is everything and everywhere mm. god is everything and everywhere if you believe him then you might as well stop calling yourself a Christian because you're not. And you might as well start telling people that you are a new ager and you are expecting the cosmic Christ, that you are expecting the false Christ of the new age, that many detractors, liars, and saboteurs on their way to hell have been working on you're not coming up with something new, Mr. West. This is a very old and ancient lie from our mother and father who fell for the same thing that you are. Therefore, the cosmic Christ is the Christ that is free from a particular historical event. I.e., they're saying that it is man realizing that he's God and not Jesus Christ dying on the cross for your sins. It is active throughout the whole range of time. It is active in each one of us, whether we are Christians or not. Oh, you mean like what Kanye just said, that God is in everything and everywhere? And it holds the promise that we can each be incarnations of the sacred. It reveals its feminine side and the side that is beyond gender. What does that mean? That's Kabbalah. Which is, this is, a, I believe what Leonard uh, Sweet is saying here. It is present within nature. Nature. Do you see what Kanye West is doing? Do you see it? It is a spirit of sacredness within the earth and within the whole cosmos. Isn't that what Kanye has been telling you? It is present in other faith traditions, including many of those we call pagan, as in Christianity. Uh -huh. And sometimes it seems to me that it is more present in other religious understandings than in some of the Christian, yucky, yucky denominations with those four walls and their pews and their tradition. It makes me ill. 
whose attitudes and actions betray <laughs> the compassionate, universal, and loving qualities of the Christ. This is refuse that the devil has put in people's hearts. And this generation, as I've said before, you are so ready for your damnation and your seven years of tribulation and whoever's going to get polished off in those first few seals, two billion, two billion are gone. You will watch your friends and family choke on their blood. According to scripture, wake up. Why would Leonard Sweet consult with a new ager like Spangle and then write favorably about a panantheistic cosmic Christ who is in everyone and everything? Well, Sweet underscores this when he writes that the world of nature has an identity and purpose apart from the human benefit, but that we constitute together a body, a cosmic body of Christ. <clears throat> and this article continues to link up the Legos or the precepts or the, the false teachers that are all bringing this into union in this book, a wonderful deception, right? In Daniel, the Antichrist will come and he will do what? He will destroy wonderfully. In quantum spirituality, it is clear that even with all the Leonard Sweet postmodern vernacular and evangelical language of the turncoats, that he is still a New Age sympathizer to the nth degree. Sweet's affection for the New Age teachers and the cosmic Christ is right in his book, Quantum Spirituality, posted in its entirety on his website for free as of this writing for all to see. And one church poll describes Sweet as one of the, get this, most influential Christian leaders today, but the late Aquarian conspiracy author Marilyn Ferguson would have identified someone with his beliefs as a fellow Aquarian conspirator. I tell you that as your children are being led to believe that Kanye is a Christian, he is leading your babies to the pit of hell to have their sins paid for and to take responsibility for their wickedness. And that's what happens when you use unbelief against Christ and you take another Christ. And they are bringing this into being by manufacturing it through his album, Jesus is King. No, Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he is what I affectionately refer to as the great sin eater on the cross. He goes on to say that Leonard's book, Quantum Spirituality, clearly reveals some new implications of Sweet's double-tongued, 1 Timothy 3.8 and double-minded, James 1.8 teaching. Yet the New Age implications of Sweet's ministries do not, uh, do not carry over to Rick Warren based on the one talk they gave together in 95. However, this is more to this than the Tides of Chain joint uh, joint presentation that he talks about in another chapter, Warren further aligns himself with this new age sympathizer when he endorsed Sweet's 1999 book, Soul Tsunami, Sink or Swim in a New Millennia Culture, Millennium Culture. So he does a really good job throughout this book, footnoting everything. And he's talking about the relationship between Warren's and Rick Warren CFR, Council of Foreign Relations, Rick Warren, the guy that came up with Chrislam, blending Islam and Christianity together, the peace plan and so on and so forth, which is all explained out in this book. Very good book. Warren B. Smith. And he is showing the relationship between his supporting these fake Christians Warren's ministry was becoming even more apparent with regard to, you know, this, this furthering of this, these new, new age implications. Not surprisingly, in Seoul, Tsunami Suite quickly introduces then the Robert Schuler Rick Warren, New Age Emergent Church themes of dun, 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 God's dream for the world and a new reformation from the church. Again, this was talked about a long time ago. That was the front end of it, or however you want to put it. The back end of it, front end, whatever. 
Now you're seeing the other end of it. It's been so successful that you're seeing the culmination is the point. And Kanye is bringing it forth. And silly, foolish people are so worried about Kanye. Pray for Kanye. Pray for the billionaire that they don't even see the sabotage of their own church from within and their babies being led by the Pied Piper of hell. So they say things like the time to save God's dream is now. The people to save God's dream are you. God is birthing the greatest spiritual awakening in the history of the church. God is calling you to midwife that birth. Are you going to show up? See, they want a new humanity, but they want to do it through their methods, through their technology, through their sorcery, through the way of Cain, doing things their way. And while the world is rethinking its entire cultural formation, it's time to find new ways of being the church. Kanye West is spearheading that now that are true to our most modern context. It is time for a postmodern reformation. I mean, can you believe this snot? And there's nothing in the Bible about God wanting to dream. God doesn't dream. God just is. And you're going to see that there are people that are now assigning, like Glenn Beck, the Mormon, who Chuck Pierce endorsed him and gave him a mantle of authority in this new age reformation. Kim Clement, the deceased Kim Clement, uh, Trump and all these other people, they're all, they're all telling you that this, this great awakening is happening. This, this move of God and that it's coming through Kanye and, you know, Trump, they started it with Trump. I didn't I didn't mean to say that Trump is saying that about Kanye. Although they're talking about dragon energy and all this. But they did the same thing with Trump saying, oh, we prophesied him to come. Lance Wall knew and Kim Clement. And he's a baby Christian. He's taking back the government. He's taking back this. He's taking back that. Oh, he's taking something. All right. And uh, he's a baby Christian. So let him do whatever he wants. And now you have the same cycle of lies starting with Kanye. It's the same thing. So, you know, in the end of the story, it's it's an ever burgeoning group of people that are trying to lie to you and get the church aligned for the Antichrist. Prepare your church spiritual growth and connectivity, commenting on um, small groups in his book, Quantum Spirituality. Sweet sounds just like Matthew Fox when he writes the following, the power of the small group and its ability to develop the discipline to get people in phase, uh, indoctrinated, with the Christ consciousness and connected with one another. And on and on it goes. So the things that the Apostle Paul warns about confusing the body of Christ with the body of a harlot were a false Christ. Know you not that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I not take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know you not that you are... Uh, Know ye not that which is joined to a harlot is one body? Oh, you mean like Babylon? Like like the Antichrist for? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. In another place, and that's 1 Corinthians 6, 15 and 16. In another place, Paul warns, I marvel that you are so far removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would, pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven or Kanye West preach another gospel or Rick Warren preach another gospel unto you that we preached unto you or uh, rather that we did not let him be accursed. Galatians 1, 6 and 7. You think it's kind of important? It is. This too is good. Ephesians 5.11, talking about keeping things separate. Given all Sweet's new age, new spirituality, sympathies, Rick Warren has continued to work with Sweet and promote him rather than separate himself from him and expose him as the Bible admonishes him to do. Why do that, Pastor, when you can just be a worker, be for Satan? 
and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Ephesians 5.11. Not allow error and sin. Well, Kanye spreads that to everybody. Steve Bancars. He's just a baby Christian. Let him, let him make his errors. And so they all front for each other. They all lie for each other. There's this blending of an holy, evil, ungodly, satanic faiths and religions into a oneness, a spiritual sense that the world has always been one and they want to go back to that. And that's talked about there in Revelation 17, that, that they will be of one mind. And like all New Agers, Peck embraces the belief that the realization of our oneness with God or our own godhood is essential to spiritual growth and freedom from problems. Attaining a godhood is really the only reason we exist, he says. Realization of our own divinity is also the purpose behind evolution, which is another miracle to Peck. That's where Kanye's going. And so on and on. And on it goes. They want to bring about a revolution. And that's also clearly apparent and closed on Sundays, if you pay attention. And many men and women have been about this. This is what Kanye was talking about. An underground revolution that will be a global phenomenon bringing peace to the world. He's a Christian innovator, don't you know? A revolution that will change the cellular structure of the human race? New cell theory. And you have other popular New Agers. She's trying to run for president. Marianne Williamson, Neil Donna Walsh. They want to change history and change everything on the surface the talk of a revolutionary world peace that will change everything sounds admirable however this piece is based on the deceptive new age principles not on a sound biblical foundation and christian leaders seem to be taking the church into a quantum spirituality of a new age new spirituality into a new worldview into a coming new world religion and he footnotes the heck out of this. So if you want to understand where this is all going. And this this place has a lot of free information. Um, there's a ton of articles here. There is so much information I wish that link would have sent me exactly to the book but that's okay <laughs> so you see these people that are turncoats and liars um they have research journal they have uh, free stuff though too Might not be in the right um, place for that, but let me see if I can find it for you. Yeah, so they've got several websites and Lighthouse Trails Research project is the blog and it's got a lot of articles yeah see blog i think they've revamped their their website so here's the online store here's the archives and here's the blog and then more resources so i'll grab that link if then you want to go study this more How is the new spirituality changing the church? That is the question, and it is a changing.
And here is the book right here, which got five out of five stars. It is very good. He also did false, false Christ coming. Does anybody care? And they don't. Well, a few do maybe. Uh, but this is the book and it's very good. And then he also did this one too. I read this one too. Deceived on purpose. The new age implications of the purpose driven church that really focuses on Rick Warren. And I have videos talking about Rick Warren uniting with these Calvary chapels. This is the guy here. And he is not a money preacher. He's on it. I I haven't heard anything weird or unusual from him. So this is Warren B. Smith. And he's been a writer for Lighthouse for a long time. And this is, I also have this book too, The Light That Was Dark. From the New Age to Amazing Grace. And in it, it's really, I'm going to wrap this up here. But in it, it's really funny because he details his unusual experience coming to Christ. And it's funny because this one day as he's um, in this process of being wooed by the Holy Spirit. But, you know, he's completely involved in all this new age. He goes to a new age bookstore or something like that. And I believe that he picks up a Bible or something like that. It's been a little while since I read it. And he's, this is so funny. I always remembered this and treasured it. But he said that immediately in this moment, this homeless guy came over and just for absolutely no reason started harassing him and haranguing him and would not shut up and was telling him, oh, are you going to read that book? You need to put that down. Get rid of that book. Blah, 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 blah. All this stuff. And I remember <laughs> Warren thought to himself in this moment, remember, he's not a Christian at this point. Um, he's just barely starting to understand that they have been calling demons and they've been messing with his wife. And she's just sent, you know, in other contexts at other times, she, she just sit there for hours on end being weird, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so they started to realize, oh, we're, we're, we're evil. So anyhow, so this guy comes over, he starts messing with them and he has this thought and he goes, does evil know that I'm trying to read the Bible? Like he finally got a glimmer of a clear understanding that evil is real, that the devil is real. Because remember in new age, they don't believe that the devil is real or that there really is any kind of evil or sin or anything like that. And they would keep going to their practitioners for help, but they could never do anything. And his wife kept being messed with by demons. But I've just always remembered that and thought it was so funny when he, when he was going through that moment and asking, does evil know that I'm trying to read the Bible right now. And so that was just a funny, a funny moment. So I, I really, really, really like Warren Smith. That wonderful deception, the back cover. Um, I actually need to have that blown up a little bit. I got good eyes, but I need, I need a little help. Give me the back of the book. Deceived on purpose. George, I mean, his his writing is so well. I It's kind of hard to see this. A little love and love at the whole lump. Galatians 5, 9. I want the back cover. A wonderful deception. Five years after writing Deceived on Purpose, the New Age implications of the purpose-driven church, former New Age follower Warren B. Smith continues to reveal how Christian leaders, wittingly or unwittingly, are leading the church into a spiritual trap, a wonderful deception, in quotes. Examines church metaphors, concepts, and beliefs that are essentially the same as those being used in today's New Age teachings. Twinsies, and why biblical prophecy is being minimized and explained away, the new science is being used to prepare the world and the church to accept the new spirituality and a false new age Christ. Yeah. This book explains how the puzzle pieces are in place for the strong delusion described in 2 Thessalonians. A wonderful deception pierces right into the heart of this deception while preparing believers in Jesus Christ to effectively stand against it. True. Some key areas addressed in this book is how a Broadway Christianity is deceiving many in the church, 
how the new science will try to prove that God is in everything. Hello, Kanye. How Rick Warren continues to align himself with New Age sympathizers. How attempts have been made to criti uh, discredit critics of the purpose-driven movement, which is about having change agents go into churches and small groups and change the direction of the church away from the gospel and into a purpose-driven church that aligns into a peace plan and God's dream. And uh, detractors are not allowed to stay or they're driven off. How the best-selling novel, The Shack, fits into the wonderful deception. Ten scriptural reasons not to be connected with the purpose-driven mo movement and the, the new age implications of Rick Warren's Daniel Plath. So this looks like um, this was newly updated, maybe, or it's been a while since I read it. But anyhow, so highly, highly, highly recommended. Um, that is the best few books I've ever spent on a, a book. Oh, and they have an ebook for eight. That's very, very good. And 11 for a paperback is very, very, very good. I get nothing out of it other than just the joy of telling people that this is a really, really excellent read. Anyhow, thank you so much. I hope you got a lot out of this. God bless.